So, dear friends, friends, thank you for being here and for listening. As you may have read from the title and abstract, this talk is somehow a follow-up of a previous talk that I gave at AOFA 2019, two years ago, in Marseille, whose title was The Challenge of Linear Time, Boltzmann Sampling. At those times, I was presenting some previous results and a long list of wish, of hopes, if you want, of things that I wanted to do in order to complete as much as possible this long, long time project of achieving linear time complexity, essentially in all application of the Boltzmann method. Here I will tell you about a recent uh, development that I developed concerning irreducible context-free structures, generic ones. So, let me first remind you what is a context-free structure and then what is Boltzmann sampling and so on and so forth. Context-free structures are a type of combinatorial object in which you have classes of configurations whose combinatorial specification is not too nasty. It doesn't involve pointing operators or ordering or complicated structures, complicated operations, is such that the generating functions satisfy a system of equations that only involve the variable z counting the atoms, the function itself, y1 in this case, some other auxiliary functions, y2 up to yn, say, but without differential operators. So, it's just the same thing of on the left side of this equation having your y1 up to yn, and on the right side some polynomials in this y, j, and z. If the system is irreducible in a certain sense of which variables depends from which others, you are in the situation of the so-called dromota lalley woods theorem. When this theorem applies, you know that you are in the so-called smooth inverse function setting scheme, and you know that you have asymptotics in n to the minus 3 half, which is universal, and so on and so forth. In particular, in the Ravinkis theorem, you apply all the time peron frobenius theory. And uh, in the analysis of the algorithm that I do, I also use the hypothesis of this theorem and the fact that I can use the same peron frobenius theory as important points of the derivation. In particular, in particular this theory applies to the matrix, which is the linearization of the function phi. The simple situation is, of course, when you have a single equation and on top of this, the function phi is just z for some phi of just y. And this corresponds to the case of simply generated rooted planar trees, where the units are the nodes of the tree. Those objects are in bijection with Lukasiewicz excursions, which are a lattice path of a given form in which you, you can go up as much as you want, but you can go down only by minus one, and you only go forward by one at each time. This case is considerably simpler. We will see that there exists already a linear time algorithm for this, developed by Luc de Broglie. But we want to work in full generality. This is a typical example of what you could find as a irreducible context-free structure. Here you have two equations. S and T are entangled. S stands for squares and T for triangles. You can break a square. You can either define that the square will not break anymore, and you have the variable Z in red, or they will break along one or the other diagonal, and you have two triangles. Or you can break by putting a, a square a rotated square in the middle and four small triangles. So you have s equal to z plus t square plus t square plus st to the 4. 
Similarly, you can say that a triangle will be either not anymore divided or split into a square and three triangles. So the second equation. And this is a typical configuration. This is another one. This is another one. And so on and so forth. Now, Boltzmann sampling. We want to exactly sample from these structures when we want to fix the size. We want that the number of triangles and square altogether is, say, 1000. So there is a measure, in this case, say, the uniform measure, among configurations of size 1000. And in the Boltzmann sampling paradigm, what you realize is that the combinatorial specification that we gave allows you to easily sample from one specific family of measures parameterized by this parameter z, which is the same z in the system. And this family of measure is such that the size is not fixed, is a variable. But you can run it again and again up to find the accidentally one configuration with a good size. So this is a, a, an algorithm whose complexity is linear, say, in any given run, as a complexity which scales either with the size of the object that you have found or with your threshold value of size. And because if you are getting bigger, you can stop the algorithm because it is clear that you have not succeeded this time. And so the important fact is how many times do I have to run large runs before I get one of the given sides that I need? This can be proven to be polynomial, but in general not linear. So it depends from your taste. This is good news, as is discussed in the paper, but you still want to improve over this by arriving to linear complexity, which is the ultimate goal because linear complexity is intrinsic by Shannon bound. Let's say that you want to sample bridges. Bridges are lattice works, direct lattice works, say in the in the square from 0, 0 to some point. Say that this point is n0 or n minus 1, and n is your size parameter now. And you have steps which are taken from some probability distribution p of x. What you want is that you want to reach that point. This is the only non-local constraint given by the delta constraint in the measure mu. For the rest, they're just the product of the weights. Also in this case, which is slightly bit the mm, slightly variation with respect to the previous case, you can apply the same idea of Boltzmann method, which is to tune a parameter according to what you have understood by analytic combinatorics, which means in this case to tune the parameter z that deforms your probability measure for the steps so to have average zero drift and then to use the algorithm that starts again and again your work up to when you either reach your point or you go beyond that in a way that cannot be recovered. This is even simpler to visualize and as we will see is not so different from the Boltzmann method in general because bridges are often in bijection with your combinatorial structures. The complexity of the Boltzmann method in general, when you are within the smooth inverse function schema, is roughly n square, which is not bad, but it can be improved, first of all, if you make a bijection to bridges of the form that I said before. In that case, the complexity is just n to the 3 half. Because a single round tie takes a time of order n, and the probability of reaching a given point is of order 1 over square root n, 
because essentially of central limit theorem once the, the drift has been tuned. So let's take an example which is kind of general. Your steps have an horizontal displacement in the set 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and a vertical one in the set minus 1, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And the probability is 2 to the minus x1 minus x2. So 1 quarter for going 1 minus 1, 1 over 8 for going the two neighbors, and so on and so forth. So this is a typical work in your algorithm that has missed the point. This is another one that again has missed the point, which is the red one. Another one that has missed it badly. Another one and many others. And finally, you will reach one of that that reaches the point that is missed. So we are kind of in this setting and we want to accelerate the Boltzmann method by doing something smarter with this problem. So can we really reach linearity when we want to sample bridges which are not trivial? Well, the answer is yes. There is a small algorithm hidden in some part of a paper of Bachelet Bodini, Lander and Lombroso, whose main aim is to sample random permutations in a fast way. But as a corollary, they can do random shuffles of strings composed of n minus n, n minus k black and white, and n k white dots in with a complexity which is not only linear in, under the RAM model, but it is genuinely linear and optimal with respect to the bit complexity, random bit complexity, how many random numbers you need for doing your random sampling. The idea is essentially starting from the same problem that we are facing with bridges. Now we have works that go in the northeast direction and have to read that black point. You can tune your parameter of your Bernoulli distribution so to have the good drift, but you will arrive normally at a square root n distance with respect to what you want. So the naive Boltzmann for bridge, in a sense, will be wrong here. It will be only of n to the three half. The second idea is that you remember that there is fisher yates algorithm for sampling random permutation, and this one has complexity n log n, essentially. By sampling random integers in the Cartesian product of 1 times 1, 2 times 1, 3, and so on and so forth. And then you project down from a permutation to a shuffle by saying, for example, that the images of the first k integers become black and the other become white. But the idea that really reach linearity, even without this extra log, is the one of this algorithm, which is you move within the rectangle. Whenever you, you reach the boundary, you complete the work with those red steps in the deterministic only possible way that is left. And then you perform some fisher yates shufflings only on these red steps. So the Bernoulli P step is random V optimal, and you have roughly N of them. And then you have roughly square root n steps for which you pay a non-optimal log n bit complexity. But those are a sublinear fraction. And square root n times log n is sublinear respect, with respect to n. So you are asymptotically optimal. We should keep these ideas in mind, especially the fact that you miss your point by central limit theorem and you want to correct for that by doing something at the end. So, as I was saying, when you are in the simpler case of simply generated trees, there is already an algorithm for doing that. It 
it's the debrayard that also becomes optimal once you complement it by the BDHL random shafting algorithm. The idea is that first you sample the number of steps of each type that you have, and then you perform the shuffle that you need. The trouble is that this algorithm doesn't work for generic syntax, generic uh, combinatorial specifications, because when you have more equations, you have label trees instead of trees, say color trees in n colors, and this gives you works that are correlated or complicated in any sense, the steps are not exchangeable in self. So let us first illustrate our algorithm with the example of bridges that we had before. What's an idea that can accelerate the Boltzmann method? First of all, we single out one type of step. We single out, in this case, the step 1 minus 1. We sample random steps, not from the initial distribution, but from one from which the special step has been removed. So in that case, we have a work that is drifting towards the... It has a slightly positive drift. And then again, you stop at some point. Now we define the landing diagonal as the diagonal that goes with slope minus one from our destination point. So you make those random steps and you can either jump over this diagonal or land on it. Suppose that you land on it. You will be there at some position n minus m n. If you have tuned the parameters well, m is essentially near to the saddle point expectation for the number of steps of that type. In this case, it will be one quarter of them. If you are there, then you have a parameter m on which you have to play. So you have an acceptance rate that depends on m and in fact potentially also on the rest of the path. This acceptance rate is potentially complicated, but suppose that you can, you can devise such an acceptance rate. Then you complete the path with the m missing 1 minus 1 steps, and, you, and then you perform a BBHL shuffle of these new steps with the old steps, and you reach back the path that I showed you already. Now, the point is that the acceptance rate can be made as large as possible, essentially, as the maximum over n of the possible acceptance rate. And as the maximum is arised essentially at the saddle point, and the acceptance rate is a smooth function essentially with the same width of the Gaussian of the central limit theorem, also, the average acceptance rate will be of order 1. And this algorithm will have a complexity which is linear because the number of restarts is of order 1. Actually, in order to do that, you need a subtlety, which is the fact that we need a small deformation of this critical measure pz of x, which is obtained using a, a value of z which is not the critical one, but slightly supercritical or supercritical in a certain sense. And this corrects for the fact that the few paths in which you make one long jump up to the diagonal, that were having a very large probability at the beginning, now they are suppressed as they should, and the acceptance rate can be pumped in this way. So, context-free structures are colored random trees in a hidden way. For example, for this small gamma, you have A, and you can break it in one of the three types that are 
given in the equation, in this case by az, and then you take another a and you uh, v square this time and a b and you break in a cube and so on and so forth. And up to when you don't have any more letters in the stack. So you go from the specification to a Gatton Watson tree to a random rewriting system if you want. Those are trees in a sense, except for the fact that you have internal nodes which have letters from one to the number of equations and the leaves are counting the sides. If you believe to everything that goes in asymptotic analysis and so on and so forth, the stack size will be essentially an excursion and the size within the process will be essentially a straight line. So essentially you want to sample excursions of a given form which by the cyclic lemma are essentially bridges of a given form. But now you have colors everywhere. You are counting leaves and not nodes. And the colors are giving no local correlations. So what we have seen so far of previous algorithms and all the previous algorithms that we have around do not work in this case. And we need a new, we need a new idea. I will only sketch it briefly now. So this was our example of squares broken into triangles and squares. And if you construct the tree associated to that, I recall you the rules, this is the tree. So orange and, and cyan are the squares and triangles to be split. And blue and red are the squares and triangles which are stuck forever. So here the size is 47 because we have three squares and 44 triangles. So what we do is the following. First of all, we break the tree into subtrees at all orange nodes in this way. Now we have essentially subtrees which have leaves of two types, Z nodes and Y1 nodes, which means blue or red nodes or orange nodes. We transform these trees into steps, and these steps have horizontal and vertical displacement given by the number of Z and Y1 leaves. And with these steps, we do bridges, bridges with the appropriate measures, which is not exactly the previous one that I showed you, but one which is corrected by the 1 over k factor in the cyclic lemma. And then we sample those bridges with our algorithm that is adapted also to this case, we have to construct the good measures which is modified with the trick that I told you and the good accept ratio function which will turn out to be the complicated things but then you will have it and once you have it you can do that in full generality because the only thing that you need to prove is that the drift of the new measure is positive that the acceptance rate, rate can be done of order one, and all of this can be done with Perron Frobenius theory and based on the model algebra theory. So, thank you for listening. This is all.